next day has made things breezy and dry. It's going to lead to a beautiful afternoon with temperatures close to 80 degrees, but the weekend weather looks even better than today. I'll have a look ahead coming up in just a bit. Live from Case at 12, the news at noon starts right now. An argument turned deadly when police say a 19 year old man shot and killed his stepfather. Now that teen is facing murder charges. It happened around 1230 this morning in the 100 block of Alvarez Place. That's on the city's south side. Police tell us 49 year old Mark Ramos was arguing with 19 year old Jaron Diego Garcia's mother. Police say Garcia intervened when he heard Ramos threaten his mother. Officers tell us that Garcia threw a speaker at Ramos's head before loading up a gun and shooting him several times in the chest. He was taken to University Hospital where he later died. Police say Garcia stayed at the scene and cooperated with officers is now in custody facing murder charges. One bullet has ended the life of a man in far northwest Bear County. Sheriff's investigators say he was shot once in the face while inside an apartment with a group of people near Interstate 10 in Fair Oaks Parkway. As Katrina Weber reports, deputies say so far none of them has offered any useful clues about the case. A life cut short has sheriff's investigators taking a long, hard look at what happened here at the Rustico at Fair Oaks Apartments. Inside a third floor unit, they found a man dead from a gunshot wound in his face around two this morning. They say he was there with other people. So far, none of them giving a clear picture of how and why he was shot. They were taken downtown for more intense questioning while other investigators stayed behind for hours, carefully searching for evidence. But at that time, they did not come up with any easy answers. Investigators have been asking the public for help with this case. That includes going around door to door and asking neighbors for any surveillance video they might have. They also plan to move their investigation indoors after getting a warrant to search the apartment. The living room is where investigators say they found the victim. According to deputies, he was young, about 20 years old. What they wouldn't say was whether they found the gun that was used to kill him. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. County Sheriff's detectives are asking anyone with information about the crime or anyone who may have noticed anything unusual at the crime scene to give them a call. The number is 210-335-6000. We are still waiting to learn the name of the woman who died this morning in a crash on the city's north side. It happened just before 2 o'clock this morning on Loop 1604 near Bitters Road. Police tell us the woman lost control of the vehicle. It caused her to jump a barrier on the access road. Police say the vehicle then spun and hit an electrical pole. She was pronounced dead at the scene. No other vehicles were involved in the crash. And the search continues this noon for the person responsible for a shooting on the city's south side. Police tell us it happened before 11 last night at the intersection of Connor and West Mitchell Street. That's not far from Highway 90. Officers say a man and a woman got into an argument near Ritterman when the suspect followed the two across town to Connor Street. Police say the victim got out of the car and began arguing with the suspect. Officers tell us that's when the suspect pulled out a gun and fired at the victim. His shoulder was grazed by a bullet, and he did not go to the hospital, though. Meantime, police are still looking for the shooter. Turning now to the pandemic, local health officials reporting 242 new cases of COVID-19 in Bear County, along with two more deaths. Mayor Ron Nuremberg says the seven-day rolling average is now 329 cases per day. Hospitalizations are at their lowest point since November. Meantime, WellBed mass vaccination sites reopened registration this morning. 9,000 doses of the Moderna vaccine will be available. So that means you must be 65 years or older and over the age of 18 with an underlying health condition to qualify. The phone lines open at 8 this morning and will remain open until all the slots are filled. You can call the number on your screen right now, 833-968. 1745. You can also find this information on ksat.com. The Senate now debating President Biden's nearly $2 trillion COVID-19 relief package. ABC's Elizabeth Schultz reports the debate delayed for several hours overnight after Republicans forced the entire text of that bill to be read on the Senate floor. 
As Senate Republicans try to stall a vote on President Biden's COVID relief package, economic aid for millions of Americans is hanging in the balance. Pursuant to the fifth sentence of the clause one. Wisconsin Republican Senator Ron Johnson forcing the Senate clerk to read the entire text of the 628 page bill, delaying debate on the legislation by nearly 11 hours. I'm trying to actually return the Senate to more deliberative body when it relates to a $1.9 trillion spending package. Republicans are expected to introduce several amendments to the bill today as part of another effort to postpone a vote. They argue the price tag of the $1.9 trillion package is too high. This isn't a pandemic rescue package. It's a parade of left-wing pet projects. The bill includes additional unemployment benefits of $400 per week, $160 billion for coronavirus testing and vaccines, help for small businesses, and $1,400 stimulus checks for individuals earning up to $75,000 per year. It's simply an extension of the things that were bipartisan priorities last year. Democrats say the delay is wasting valuable time for Americans in need of help. Federal unemployment benefits are set to run out March 14th. And the government's February unemployment report showed that while hiring is starting to pick up, the economy still has 9.5 million fewer jobs than before the pandemic started. It's our job to hasten the day when Americans co can go back to work. Now senators can present unlimited amendments, so this will turn into a bit of a stamina test today. Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News, Washington. Just a reminder, the statewide mask mandate set to expire on Wednesday of next week on March 10th. However, some businesses are still going to be encouraging people to wear their masks in their stores. Right now on KSAT.com, we have a complete list of stores and restaurants that are requiring masks. Some include Via Transit and HEB. You can find the entire list right now on KSAT.com. A committee assembled by the mayor to examine how the city's utilities handled last month's weather-related disaster met for the first time this morning. Hundreds of thousands of us lost power, many for extended periods of time, and pipes burst all around the city, stemming from the power grid issues during February's cold weather and snow. The committee spent its first meeting hammering out the scope of its inquiries, which boiled down to establishing a timeline, looking at how the different entities communicated and what that impact was. Though their discussion initially indicated the committee's focus will be on the utilities of the city of San Antonio, it left the full scope open to include looking at other groups or organizations. The committee's chairman said they would look to identify changes that would need to be made, but the committee does not have the authority to force them to be implemented. Happening right now, Governor Greg Abbott is in Tyler, and he's holding a press conference on Senate Bill 12. Now, that bill will help prohibit social media companies from censoring Texans based on viewpoints they express. We're live streaming this right now on KSAT.com. It looks like springtime is right around the corner where you can walk through the tulips or tiptoe through the tulips if you want. Go strawberry picking, too. Still ahead. One of the top players in the Big 12 showed off some skills last night. Larry Ramirez with more highlights coming up in sports. And after one year of closing due to the pandemic, Morgan's Wonderland is finally back open to the public. Alicia Barrera after the break explains what guests can expect on their next visit. Morgan's Wonderland is now open again. The theme park ready to welcome you back. The park shut down about a year ago this month because of the coronavirus. Now it's springing back to life amid the pandemic. Alicia Barrera visited the park and explains what new policies and procedures are now in place in order to keep visitors safe. Sanitations, check. Butterflies to remind you where to stand, check. And don't forget to get a pump of hand sanitizer before you head to the next area. Staff at Morgan's Wonderland has been hard at work to make sure the ultra accessible park is ready to roll in a pandemic world. We have talked to doctors, we've talked to professors, we've talked to physicians, you name it. We have gotten every single um, procedure and protocol from the experts to make sure that we are ensuring the uh, limiting the exposure of COVID-19 in the world today. But today wouldn't be possible without community support. We got a generous donation from Richmond Advantage to help us, you know, help our team just take those extra steps in providing hand sanitizer to our guests, um, additional mask, 
um, cleaning supplies as well. Um, as far as guests coming in through the doors, we have. And although Governor Greg Abbott announced that as of March 10th, the mask mandate will be lifted and businesses can run at full capacity, for now, Things will not change at the theme park. Come through our doors. We ask that you please, please, please purchase your tickets online. We do have capacity limit um, restrictions that we are putting on the park um, in place. Uh, wear a mask, of course. Although there may not be new rides this year, the team at Morgan's Wonderland says that the biggest addition is the smiles that will once again bring life to Morgan's Wonderland. For park hours, you can head over to KSAT.com. Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Good day to get outside, isn't it? Woo, it's beautiful out there. Definitely. We're on a roll. We are on a roll. We're rolling through the 70s right now. We're going to get up to 80 degrees this afternoon for the high temperature. So good news. The aquifer is actually up about a tenth of a foot over the past 24 hours. And the 10 day total is now uh, above 660 feet. And that's that critical level for stage one water restrictions. So we'll see what SAWS and the aquifer authority do with that information. Pollen count also looking good. Mold is low down from yesterday. Ash and elm are low as well. You know what I don't see there? I don't see any mountain cedar. We're hoping that that continues to be the trend as mountain cedar season has gone a little bit later, I think, due to uh, the February deep freeze. Now, coming up in the forecast, we're going to talk about this weekend. It looks beautiful. I'll have the forecast coming up. Tulip season is in bloom at Sweetberry Farms, North San Antonio. There's a $5 admission fee and it's $2 for every flower that you want to take home. Sweetberry Farm also getting ready for strawberry season where guests can go strawberry picking. The farm is open through Saturday from 8.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. and Sunday from 1 to 5 in the afternoon. tulips there. I'm impressed by that. Yeah, I'm especially after that freeze yeah. and I'm triply impressed. She knew tiptoe through the tulip. She knew the song. <laughs> she can sing it. Tiny Tim's tiptoe through Tiny Tim's tiptoe through. It's a creepy song. That's all. Yes. That was tiptoe through the tulip. There you go. It's really creepy. Can you and play the ukulele? I can sort can of play the ukulele. You're good. <laughs> when you were talking about we're, we're rolling through the 70s, I was thinking with tiptoe through, through the, the tulips. tulips. All right, well, let's get into the weather and talk about how we're going to have a pretty nice weekend. It's going to be cooler than today. Today we are off to the races with temperatures close to uh, the 80s in some locations already. It's 75 degrees outside, mostly cloudy, but most of those clouds are those high, thin cirrus clouds that don't do too much to uh, keep out the sunshine and they're going to be moving on through and we're going to be left with uh, times of complete sun and times where we do see some of those cirrus clouds out there. Right now winds are from the west northwest at 10 miles per hour in San Antonio, but elsewhere we're seeing gusts of up to 25 miles per hour. Temperatures are pretty warm. One thing I want to show you that's really cool is you can see where the escarpment is with the cooler temperatures up near Kerrville and Rock Springs. Still nice and comfortable at 72 in Kerrville, 66 in Rock Springs, but a few degrees warmer uh, on the lower elevation, 75 in New Braunfels and here in San Antonio, 73 in Gonzales. It's 77 in Del Rio, 75 in Carrizo Springs, 74 in Kennedy, already almost 80 degrees down near Laredo. Now notice that the winds, the winds have turned to the north and to the west up Rock Springs and Del Rio sustained wind 15 to 20 miles per hour. Uh, we're going to see windier conditions here in San Antonio as we head into the afternoon. We've already got breezy conditions with the wind from the west at about 10 miles per hour. But this afternoon, we'll see gusts up to 25 to 30 miles per hour uh, from the north and from the west. Notice that a cool front, this is a very weak cool front, not doing anything to our temperatures right now, but what it is doing Doing is bringing in much drier air from the west and from the north. Dew points in the 30s out in Rock Springs and in Del Rio and in Kerrville. Meanwhile, dew points are still in the 60s across parts of uh, Gonzales and the coastal plain, and everyone is going to get that drier air from that front moving in. One thing I want to point out is that with the drier air moving in, out toward Brackettville, Kinney County, and 
uh, Valverde County, the windy and dry conditions are going to create an elevated fire danger today. So please be careful. Try to avoid outdoor burning, especially out to those areas to the west. And unfortunately, all of the rain with this system is out near the center of low pressure. So areas in Oklahoma and across Arkansas and Louisiana are getting the rain. We just don't have enough umph to bring us the rainfall and enough moisture in the atmosphere to produce rain. So the rest of the afternoon is going to be nice and sunny and yes, it will get gusty with gusts up to 25 to 30 miles per hour. Again, it's this area that needs to watch out for the fire danger. Meanwhile, tomorrow morning we'll start off with clouds and we'll end up with sunshine in the afternoon. So not only is today going to be beautiful, but tomorrow will be beautiful as well. The rest of the day today, 81 for the high sunset at 636. It'll be a cool evening temperatures in the 50s and 60s and it'll be breezy. And then over the weekend, a very nice weekend morning clouds, afternoon sun will start off in the upper 40s and top off in the mid to upper 60s both Saturday and Sunday a very seasonable weekend average temperatures and and conditions for us and as far as rain goes not really going to see any rain over the next seven days which is unfortunate but we do have the chance for morning drizzle on Monday so I've been saying this if you want to get the car wash now's the time to do it because I know that some of our cars still have brine and, and That's right. dirty. That's right. You need to get that salt off of there. Exactly. Exactly. Thanks, Sarah. What was that last night? What was what last night? Uh, yeah. Oh, that? Yeah, what was well, that? Well, the Spurs turned over the ball too many times, and it cost them against OKC to end the first half of the season. And in college hoops, OU at UT went down to the wire. Coming up. Shorthanded again, the Spurs did not get the win they wanted in the first half of the season versus OKC. Keita Bates Diop feeds Luka Shamanich for two of his six points off the bench. A bit later now, it's Bates Diop from behind the arc showing off his range. He scored seven points as a reserve. Late in the first half, DJ finds Lonnie Walker the fourth for a corner triple, and the Spurs led 61 to 50 at halftime. But the shorthanded Thunder would come back in the second half. The Spurs turn it over. Shea Gilgis Alexander drives and feeds Isaiah Roby from out of nowhere for a big slam dunk, and his teammates just loving that. But the main dude to do in the Spurs was Gilgis Alexander. He drives and shoots over three Spurs in the paint. Bank shot good for two of his game best 33. Spurs fall 107. 102, 27 Spurs turnovers led to 26 OKC points. I think we had to do more drive and kick. Uh, we were getting a little deep and, you know, starting myself, uh, jumping and passing, which is dangerous in NBA uh, basketball, period. But, you know, as a team, uh, I feel like we could have made, you know, those extra passes right away, you know, just making the defense move because they made us move a lot too. They had us scrambling all over the place and they got good things and, there's no excuses, man. A lot of turnovers led to 20-odd points uh, for them, and then that's essentially the game right there. Um, yeah, no excuses when it comes to them. They're, they're all mental. Spurs will resume play March 10th at Dallas. Then March 12th, they'll come home to face Orlando in front of a crowd of some 3,200 fans. Number 15, Texas, played at number 16 in Oklahoma last night. A tight ball game. Late second half, horns down one when Courtney Ramey creates space to make a three. Then moments later, he does the same thing again. Space, three, good, and Texas leads 59 to 54. Matt Coleman the third would come up clutch with 14 seconds to go, and Texas wins on the road 69-65. Texas visits TCU on Sunday. 17th rank, Oklahoma State, visiting number three, Baylor and Waco. Jam of the game right here. Check this out. Jared Butler dribbles right around his guy for the poster jam. Look at that again. It's too good not to. The Bears led 42-31 at halftime. The second half was evenly matched. Baylor's 11-point lead was all they needed. They win 81-70. Baylor is home against number 18, Texas Tech on Sunday. Speaking of, we close out our Big 12 highlights with Iowa State at number 18, Texas Tech. David Sears is watching this one. Red Raider Mac McClung doing McClung type things. Lefty layup high off the window. Then in the second half, he drives in again, hits a tough left-handed layup as he hits the ground, plus the foul. Friendly arm coat roll 
He scored a game high 20, David. Tech takes it 81 54. And right here in town, Javon Jackson and Keaton Wallace each had 23 points, leading UTSA men's basketball to a 123 43 win over Southwestern Adventist, the largest margin of victory in program history last night at the Convocation Center. Next up for UTSA, the Conference USA Tournament. That's a lot of points for it. It is a lot of points. All right, Larry. Thank you. You got it. February was a big month for the economy. How many jobs the U.S. added? Still coming up. A new poll shows more than half of Americans approve President Joe Biden's response to COVID-19. A look at what else the poll showed after the break. Now to the newest troubles for New York Governor Andrew Cuomo, one of the women accusing him of sexual harassment, now detailing her conversations with the embattled governor in a new interview. He's also under federal investigation for aspects of his handling of the coronavirus pandemic. ABC's Rita Roy has the latest. Three women have accused New York Governor Andrew Cuomo of sexual misconduct, and now one is speaking out publicly in an interview with CBS. Do you believe that he was propositioning you? Yes. For what? Sex. 25-year-old Charlotte Bennett telling CBS the governor asked her about her sex life during a one-on-one -on -one meeting in June when she worked for him as an executive assistant. Without explicitly saying it, he implied to me that I was old enough for him and he was lonely. She says he would ask her about her sexual assault experience but never got physical with her. Because of my drama. The governor asked me if I was sensitive to intimacy. Bennett says she reported the encounter to Cuomo's chief of staff and was transferred to another department. She then left the administration in November. Another former staffer, Lindsay Boylan, also coming forward, saying the governor gave her an unwanted kiss. Third accuser, Anna Rook, telling the New York Times this week she met the governor at a wedding reception in 2019, where she claims he asked to kiss her. The state attorney general launching an official investigation looking into the three claims, the governor denying all of the allegations. I now understand that I acted in a way that made people feel uncomfortable. It was unintentional, and I truly and deeply apologize for it. Meantime, New York state lawmakers voting on whether to strip Governor Cuomo of his emergency coronavirus powers, as he also faces a federal probe into his handling of nursing home deaths early in the pandemic. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. More than half of Americans say they approve of President Joe Biden's response to the coronavirus pandemic. According to a new poll from the Associated Press, 70 percent of Americans back his handling of the virus response, including 44 percent of Republicans, 55 percent of Americans approve the Biden's approach to the economy. Meantime, 63 percent say the U.S. economy is in poor shape. The president argued that until the spread of the virus is under control, the economy won't fully recover. Right now on KZ.com, you can read more on the poll results as well as find links to other articles about President Biden's COVID-19 relief bill. The Labor Department saying employers added 379,000 jobs in February, which is the most since October. The Labor Department says it's a sign that the economy is improving. This also means consumers are spending more as states and cities ease up their business COVID-19 restrictions. The February gain marked a pickup from the 166,000 jobs in January, a loss of 306,000 back in December as well. The unemployment rate fell to 6.2 percent. In New Zealand, tsunami warnings were triggered after one of the strongest earthquakes hit the South Pacific Ocean. The 8.1 magnitude quake caused those tsunami warnings. The threat caused some chaos in New Zealand as people scrambled to get to higher ground. Everyone was allowed to safely return home after the National Emergency Management Agency gave the all clear. That is so scary. I've read the warning and it said, walk, run or bike. Do not drive to higher ground because they didn't want people to get caught in traffic. So, oh my goodness. My goodness. Thank goodness we don't have to worry about tsunamis here in San Antonio. 
It is a beautiful day outside right now with clearing skies and temperatures on the rise. Let's take a look at the satellite imagery. A few wispy cirrus clouds around San Antonio, but that is a welcome change to this morning when we were completely cloudy. A wider view here and most of us are enjoying complete sunshine with the exception of some of our coastal communities. If you live out toward Valverde County, if you live in Kinney County, even in Maverick County, careful today because it is dry and it is breezy and it's getting warm and that's a those are bad combinations when it comes to grass fire danger. So please use caution and try to avoid outdoor burning today. 77 in Pleasanton and here in San Antonio, we are warming up 76 in Hondo, 77 in Del Rio, 75 in Carrizo Springs, still in the upper 60s in parts of the hill country. We're definitely going to hit 80 degrees today, probably get into uh, near 80 degrees. Now I was talking about this earlier. Uh, that if you want to get the car wash today, if your license plate says I hate dirt and you need to get a car wash after all of the bad weather a couple of weeks ago, just know that you've got the green light to go for the car wash forecast both today and through the weekend. We do have a small chance for some drizzle in the week ahead, but as I mentioned, the weekend is going to be really nice. I'll be back with a look at that weekend forecast coming up in a bit. David Ursula. Thank you, Sarah. When it comes to sleep and wellness, consistency is the key. ABC's Ike Ajachi explains how maintaining a consistent sleep schedule can affect your health. The CDC recommends adults get seven or more hours of sleep per night for best health and well-being. But a recent study shows that maintaining a consistent sleep schedule is also very important. Researchers from Michigan Medicine claim that people with variable sleep schedules tend to have worse daily moods and are at greater overall risk for depression. To help carry out their study, the team used wearable devices to track sleep patterns. Wearable devices such as smartwatches are being used by millions of people today and may be a great step in bringing awareness to sleep consistency. These findings highlight sleep consistency as an important factor in targeting depression and wellness and underscore the potential for wearable devices to help track and better understand sleeping patterns. With this Medical Minute, I'm Mike Ajachi, ABC News. A fan of the award-winning musical Hamilton has animated it using a popular Nintendo game when you can stream Hamilton, an Animal Crossing musical. Still ahead in the spotlight. The Jordan Boys basketball team in the regional semis tonight. Larry Mears with a preview coming up in sports. And Netflix wants to make it easier for you to find comedy shows. After the break, more details in its new Fast Laughs tab. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather. Streaming free on KSAT TV. This is your daily tech and business briefing from Cheddar. Gap reported earnings after the bell on Thursday. The retailer missed analyst expectations on sales. That was due to temporary store closures as a result of the pandemic. However, the company optimistic about their future. They forecasted sales growth for the rest of the year, which drove their stock higher. Gap managed to turn a profit in the quarter thanks to continued success at their Old Navy and Athleta brands. Meanwhile, the NBA warming up to cryptocurrency. The Dallas Mavericks will soon be accepting Dogecoin as a form of payment. This is part of an agreement with crypto payment service provider BitPay. Billionaire investor Mark Cuban, who's been the team owner, has been a long supporter of crypto adoption. And Jeep is rolling out a new digital feature in their newest Wagoneer and Jeep Wagoneer SUVs. The automaker revealing that their 2022 models will come equipped with Amazon Fire TVs. But no, you won't be able to watch it while you drive. The vehicle safety settings will only allow the driver to enjoy prime content when the car is parked. And the Cheddar Business to Tech Update. I'm Baker Pachado, coming to you from Cheddar Studios in Lower Manhattan. In other consumer news, T-Mobile is a consumer favorite. Now it's trying to break into the business world. The telecom giant, which is the nation's third largest wireless carrier, is unveiling a series of new offerings for business customers that includes corporate wireless plans with unlimited data and 5G access as well as cloud-based workplace communication tools. The company is also offering a home office internet program. We all need a good laugh every once in a while, right? Well, while on the Netflix app, there's now 
a tab for that. The streaming service has launched a new feature for mobile devices. It's called Fast Laughs. It lays out a list of comedy clips from the platform, including films, sitcoms, and stand-up specials. Right now, Fast Laughs is only available on iPhones, but Netflix is hoping to make it available for Android users very soon. In the spotlight this noon, fans of the musical Hamilton will want to watch this next story because an enterprising Animal Crossing player has recreated it using the video game. CNN's Rick Damagella is raising the curtain. Get your education, don't forget from whence you came, and the world's gonna know your name. What's your name, man? Alexander Hamilton. <laughs> What you are hearing is Hamilton, but what you are seeing is Hamilton, an Animal Crossing musical. Pardon me, are you Aaron Burr, sir? That depends. Who's asking? Oh, well, sure. Sir, I'm Alexander Hamilton. I'm at your service, sir. The video is an example of machinima, creating animated entertainment from video game engines. In this example, the animation is from the hit game Animal Crossing New Horizons, with Raymond the Cat starring as Alexander Hamilton. I try to do like an experiment because I see a lot of people doing this uh, kind of stuff in Animal Crossing, you know, like parodies, like series. Like, uh, well, it's a type of animation. Creator Guitar Knight 14, he's asked to be referred to by his online presence. An engineer by trade has a deep love for the musical, the game, and being creative. Interesting is that I've done, I don't study anything about uh, filmmaking or animation, anything. I like to um, edit, in, edit in videos because when I saw the incredible things that you can do, uh, yeah, and if you put uh, a little bit of imagination, you can do incredible things. He completed Act 1 in December, and Guitar Night 14 hopes to have Act 2 completed in a few months. Waiting for the lobby lights to flash in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. That's so cute. Act 1 of Hamilton, an Animal Crossing musical, is now streaming on YouTube, which took six months to create. Outside with live cam, I think we're on act four of beautiful <laughs> days in a row, right? Yeah, definitely. We had a little intermission this morning because it was well, cloudy. Did go. it <laughs> rain in the Soma area? I thought I saw puddles. There might have been a little bit of uh, mist from some fog earlier this morning, but no substantial rain for us. Thankfully, though, the aquifer is up a tenth of a foot over the past 24 hours. And some more good news in the pollen count today. Mold is down from yesterday. It's now low at 310. Ash and elm are low as well, and I do not see any mountain cedar in the pollen count. A great weekend ahead. I'll have your forecast after the break. We are rocking into the 70s today. We are? Well, past the 70s. We're probably going to be rocking into the 80s We're here gonna in a minute. We're going to get into the 80s. Yeah. Well, I thought you meant like the 70s, like the decade of the 70s. Hey. I thought you were going to bring up some like 70s music. You know what? Like Here's We've stuff. been talking a lot about yes. music this yeah. show. We've been Big. talking a lot about music. Cue up your 70s playlist. And in right around 4 p.m., oh. make sure it's on the 80s playlist. There you go. <laughs> All and right, then we can always sing, it's Friday. Yeah, you could. <laughs> you could always sing It's Friday. All right, they're trying to get me to sing on this show we this are. morning. I knew that. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the time lapse because this is how we started off the day. We started off with clouds and areas of <laughs> mist, uh, but very quickly a cool front moved through, and it's allowed for our skies to clear. And we're looking at beautiful uh, cirrus clouds with tons of blue in the sky as well. Uh, outside uh, with a visible satellite, you can see those cirrus clouds right there uh, on uh, around San Antonio, some cirrus clouds, but those are quickly moving on off to the east and look out toward Uvalde, Hondo, Lakey, tons of sunshine there. Uh, temperatures this afternoon are warming up really nicely. We're close to 80 degrees already, 77 at the airport, 75 in New Braunfels, 77 in Pleasanton, 78 uh, along 35 toward Laredo. Up in the hill country, temperatures are typically uh, right now in the upper 60s or near 70 degrees, 72 in Kerrville. Something you'll notice is that air out toward Del Rio Rock Springs, the wind gusts are up to about 30 miles per hour out there. Uh, and this is going to cause a little bit of an elevated fire danger out across parts of Valverde, Kenny County, potentially even uh, Edwards County, where we've got dry air and we've got wind gusts 
of up to 30 miles per hour. Dew points have fallen into the 30s here in San Antonio from the 60s earlier this morning. So that's the one thing that this cold front is really doing. It's allowing for drier air and windier conditions. It's still pretty muggy down in Pleasanton and down in Beeville. But as we head throughout the rest of the afternoon, everybody will be enjoying some drier weather. High temperatures today, low 80s, Catula 83, 82 in Pleasanton, 80 in Del Rio, 75 in Kerrville and 73 in Rock Springs. Just to put things uh, into an hour by hour basis for you, we'll already be in the upper 70s by 2, 81 around 4. And then in the evening, it'll be nice and cool. Temperatures in the 50s and 60s if you plan to go out this Friday night uh, with breezy conditions with gusts up to about 25 miles per hour. It's also going to be a really nice and seasonable weekend. We will be breezy tomorrow. We'll start off with clouds, upper 40s for those morning lows and comfortable in the afternoons for those high temperatures close to about 68 degrees on Sunday. Now I, I do have to have some bad news mixed in with the good news for the beautiful weekend. We are still seeing some severe drought in many places and, and across the state of Texas, 54% of the state of Texas is in drought. And the bad news is we're not expecting any kind of widespread rain across, honestly, the state of Texas over the next seven days. This is a look at rainfall potential. As you can see here in San Antonio, big hole in the rainfall potential over the next seven days. Now the one time that we do have a chance for some drizzle is on Monday morning. So as I mentioned, feel free to wash the car this weekend. You'll really only have to deal with some morning drizzle on Monday and then looking ahead to the rest of the week. It's going to be pretty mild for a March week. We'll be starting off generally in the 50s and topping off in the 70s and we'll be looking at Unfortunately, again, no chance for rain over the next seven days. Shout out to Miss Ursula Perry because she was giving me cue card times because I lost the little earpiece in my ear. So thanks, Ursula. Appreciate you. How'd I do? You did great, girl. All right. Thank you, Sarah. Like back in the 70s. Yeah. Cue well, cards. Well, you used to use TV way back then. Yeah, way well, I can't remember way back, back. We were saying, yeah. it used to be there was like 17 people in the studio. Yeah. Now yeah. everything's automated. Yeah, now there's really no one in here but us. <laughs> and we're all hanging out today, and we're going to start talking sports here. Spurs getting ready for a break thanks to the All-Star game, and they really need to rest up. Plus, <coughs> the John Paul II Catholic boys soccer team played for a state championship this morning. Coming up.